Okay, so hi everyone. I'm Sandy Casella with Casella Homes Real Estate, and I'm going to be talking to Monica Falco, M2 Mortgages with Capital Home Lending. And um, Monica and I, so Monica is a part of our real estate team. She does, she handles most of our financing for our clients, and she also um, monthly comes on with our team and talks to us about what's going on in the market with mortgages keeps us up to date on everything that's happening. So we thought it'd be a good idea to have a conversation about, you know, this is actually going to be pretty much the same conversation that we would have when we, on our Monday meetings, when we meet. So um, yeah. Hi, Monica. How are you? Hi, good. Thanks, Sandy. Thanks for having me. I'm excited Hi. to chat all things uh, market. It's been, uh, it's picked up. It's getting wild. <laughs> again, eh? again, it's so crazy that, you know, and it's funny, I've been going through my database and stuff. And I, I'm looking at, um, like conversations that I've had with clients over the years, like, and some, you know, five, six, 10 years back, and there's some people in there, and it'll say, Oh, I'm waiting for prices to come down. And I just, I think, you know what, it's such a, it just doesn't make any sense. It, they, they just, you know, they may come down, but there's always going to be a blip. I mean, we live in a, we live in a province where, where we have a housing shortage. So, you know, the, 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 okay. the idea of houses prices coming down is probably like slim to none. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny that you say that because we are, all, we are gung ho about like telling our database and our clients, you know, as soon as prime starts coming down, as soon as rates start coming down, it's going to get crazy competitive. Yeah. Um, and then everybody, you know, was, you know, worried about interest rates and really hyper-focusing on that. Now we're at the peak of interest rates, they're coming down and it's becoming, you know, it's, it's the buyer confidence is wild right now, Yeah, <laughs> which is great. But what, you know, just to your point, never wait to buy because it is like this, yeah. right? And you can never know, really, you can never know what the top or the bottom is because it's a lagging indicator, right? Like the how the prices have to start coming up for you to know that you hit the bottom and the prices have to start coming down for you to know you hit the top. So you, you never can know that you got to be really careful about who you listen to and what you read, especially in the media. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a bit, not right now, but in a bit um, mm -hmm. because of a story that I read, but um, let's talk a little bit about, about rates and stuff and, and what you're seeing going on right now. So I know, I mean, we just had the latest rate announcement, um, last week yeah. and it held, which we were anticipating. So listen, we're at the peak of prime right now. It's just a matter of how quickly is prime going to come down. One thing I want to highlight, which is super important to, um, you know, recognize is that fixed rates and variable rates are completely separate. There's a lot of like misconception about this. And even the day of the prime rate announcement, I was getting phone calls from my clients being like, is it too late to lock in? You know, it, is my pre-approval going to change if prime rates come down? The biggest thing is that fixes based on bonds, variable is based, sorry, the prime is based or variables based on prime. So if you are looking at your pre-approvals, you don't have to hyper-focus on what's going to happen with the prime, Right. Um, the biggest thing is right now from what we're seeing is the bond market is slowly starting to come down. When I say slowly, I mean very slowly. So we're not seeing any drastic changes in the fixed rates, but we are seeing them come down five basis points here, 10 basis points here, which again is very normal in the market that we are sitting in in the time of year. This time of year, lenders do usually come out with rate specials as well because they like to stay competitive and make sure that they are getting, you know, a certain amount of business this time of year, especially during the spring market. Very normal to what we're seeing. So, I mean, in regards to rates, I think I don't want there to be a big, I think there is still a big misconception that rates are just going to really come down very fast. <laughs> We're seeing this going to, it's everything is going to happen very slowly and steadily. That's what we're going to see. Prime, yes, we are anticipating likely that the prime is going to decrease this year, which is great for variable rate holders. Um, now, how quickly? We don't know. You know, we can only go based, nobody here knows. I'm not an economist. And I feel like the economists don't even know because we're really highlighting what's happening with inflation, right? And I think when the first prime rate drops, we're, they're going to have to see how the economy reacts to that. So 
you know, I can only get, go based on like the data that I'm seeing as well. I believe what they're anticipating is a 2% drop by 2025. That's very slow, very slow. Yeah. Um, so I think with rates, we have to wait and see. There is nothing is going to be overnight. It's going to be slow and steady. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. And I know we, we talked about that a little bit, a little while ago. So I don't, I, I agree. I don't think they're going to drop really fast. Cause I think that would just, they're not going to drop as fast as they rose for sure. No. Right? And so, you know how much of a frenzy that well. would cause? Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> we don't want to go back to COVID times. Let's just say that we really don't. No. <laughs> we want to go back yeah. to a stabilized market. <laughs> Exactly. And that's interesting, right? Because a lot of people think like as realtors or as, even as mortgage brokers that we love that kind of market. And and I, I disagree. Like I don't, I don't love that kind of market. I, I like a market where buyers have an opportunity to, to look at properties, put a home inspection, have a financing condition. Like they're able to look around and make a, a good decision. Right. Because yeah. that's like, that's a crazy, that's a crazy market. I don't really think, honestly, I don't, I don't even think sellers like that market because no. most of them have to buy. So then they're now on the other side of that coin. Right. So, you know, and, and as mortgage brokers, like, I'm sure that's crazy too. Like you're trying to, you've got these like people putting, buying houses and, and there's no financing condition. You got to put together the financing. Like that's just crazy. So it's, yeah. it is pretty nuts. I mean, again, I think the biggest thing is like, we've been here, we've done it. So if it happens, we'll do it again, but it's un. It's unfair, I think, not to me, because for me, I'll get the job done. But I feel like the stress that it puts on the buyers and sellers, especially because you don't have that moment to just take a breath to be like, OK, this is a big decision in our lives, but we have to go in firm or else we're not going to get the house and it has to close in 20 days or else, you know yeah. what I mean? I yeah. feel like before um covid before you know inflation um i think a normalized market was when a property was sitting on the market for 30 days and people were able to make an offer conditional on home inspection uh, home inspection conditional on financing you know so they they can get an appraisal in they can make sure that you know that the the purchase that they're making is right for them and that was a normalized market for everybody you know yeah yeah, it's yeah, that's true. It was a normalized market. I think it's um, it, like a normal market is not this craziness where how like, like you can't make any decisions at all. You've got to go in and outbid as many other people as you possibly can. So it's a it's it's interesting. Like I got my license in 1989. So I basically started selling in the worst recession ever that we've had in Canada. So I mean, that's a normal that's more of a normal market to me. Right. So um it's interesting you said earlier about buyer confidence because you know if we look at the numbers from if we look at the numbers from let's say a year ago or when rates started rising um like if a, a seller's market is considered anything a seller's market is typically considered like three and a half months of inventory or lower on the market is typically a seller's market it, months of inventory meaning if you had no more listings come on the market and no more buyers enter the market, how long would it take to sell what's currently on the market? So a seller's market is considered three and a half, maybe pushing four as a seller's market and below as a seller's market. When you get to about four to five, you're in a more balanced market. And when you start getting up into the five and a half, six, you're basically in a buyer's market. We never technically left a seller's market. We were always like, we still had, even when the, even when the houses weren't selling, we were still had, you know, it was still one and a half to two and a half months inventory on the market. What we didn't have was the buyer confidence. Like you say, yeah. as soon as the bank started held rates that first time, I think that's when the buyer confidence started to shoot up and mm -hmm. that's what happened, but we never really left a seller's market. So it was, it's very interesting. It was, it was definitely the, the buyer confidence at that point. Well, Sandy, will we ever really leave a seller's market here? I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> there's no supply. <laughs> <laughs> There's wow. lots of immigration. And, you know, I think yeah. I agree with that, though. I think yeah. now just to highlight is that more than now, more than ever, getting back into the fact that there is buyer confidence, we need to make sure that buyers are pre-approved. We need yeah. to make sure that they've really taken a look at, OK, have I given my mortgage agent my income documents? Have they looked at everything? Because if I am going in firm, we don't have any room for error. 
So that's the biggest thing is making sure they have a good team behind them. So yes, buyer confidence, but you need to be confident with the offer that you're making as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Explain the difference between that because we, we do find that with buyers is that sometimes they'll, they'll have a price in mind. And when I ask them how they came up with that price, they'll have maybe gone online and done an online calculator, or they've said, okay, well, this is how much I pay in rent if they're first time buyers, so I can afford this. But there is a big difference between getting a pre-approval and just getting a, like a, an approval where you went on like, yeah, like, especially if you deal with an online bank, some people will go on there and put in their stuff and go, okay, well, I can, you know, I can buy something for 1.5. Or even if you cost. walk into a bank, sometimes they'll yes. give a number, but they actually haven't looked into yes. her details, right? Yeah. So we have always, me and my team have always been very, um, you know, we've let our buyers be very aware of our process that we make sure that we have taken a look at all of your income documents. We've taken a look at your credit, your liabilities. We've had a discussion about down payment. And most importantly, we've taken a look at the property that you're looking to make an offer on. The biggest thing when you're, if you're pre pre-approved, the biggest thing you'll see is that We've accounted for all of your income. We've made sure that, um, you know, the stability of your income is there, whether you're guaranteed hours, whether you're self-employed, we've taken a look at your T1s. Have you been asked for your income documents? That's the number one thing, because if you haven't been asked and you really have not been pre-approved. Pre and then the secondly is, have you received your mortgage options? What are your mortgage options based off of? Is it your calculation online or is it because you have gone through the process of filling out an application given your documents have you received your mortgage options has your agent looked at the property you're offering on very two different things and you have to go through that step in order to actually be pre-approved and although it may seem scary because yeah you know it could be a lot at the very beginning but that's actually going to make things so much easier for you when you have an accepted offer, because you're not going to have to worry about whether financing is going to go through or not. Right. Yeah. So, so what I hear you say is the number one question to look for and to know if you've been pre-approved is, have you been asked for your income documents? Because if you haven't produced thing. any of that, you haven't been pre-approved. Right. No. And then it's also based on different things, right? Like you could have a certain income, but if you have another, if you have a, higher debt in some other areas, then you may not qualify for that amount. So I think exactly. it's important. Some yeah. people may not know that we use, you know, 3% of liabilities in calculations. They may just think, oh, it's my minimum payment. That's not the case. Um, and then again, you know, a lot of people may think that their income is based on their salary, plus maybe um, their commission that they've earned last month right? Or their, you know, estimated income for the year, you know, with banks, it's not like that. They're very black and black and white when we take a look at what type of income we can actually use. So yes, to answer your point, Sandy, if you haven't produced your income documents, if you, if they haven't asked you for any, you know, any proof of income or any verification, then you likely are not pre-approved yet. Perfect. Yeah, that's a good that's a good delineation there, I think. So let's talk a little bit about rates. So what are what are rates at right now? Like, let's say five year fixed or um, or the variables are still are, are still up there. eh? Yeah, the, I mean, the variable it's it's based on the discount against the prime rate that the lender is offering you. Now, I think the most important thing to differ, differentiate is what type of mortgage product are you looking for? If you're putting less than 20% down, then you're qualifying for an insured mortgage product where you're going to get the best rates. And by the way, when you Google the best rates, you're getting insured mortgage rates, which you may not necessarily qualify for, which is very important to know. Uh, but nonetheless, you're looking at about 4.89% for a five year and then prime minus one. So one is the discount against the prime that you're locking in. So as of right now, it'd be 6.2% on the variable. Okay. Now, if you're looking at a different type of uh, mortgage product, potentially maybe an uninsurable where you're purchasing for over a million, you're looking at about five and a half for a five-year fixed rate and prime minus 0.3 for an uninsured, uh, for a variable rate. So very different interest rates, but again, it's all based on product. Yeah. And I, and I think very, I wonder, I think people are still, most people are still taking fixed, right? You know what? I'm personally not recommending taking a five year at the moment just because of where we're sitting with um, with rates. Um, 
the biggest difference, I guess, right now is, you know, are you okay with risk? Um, but also the, you know, the difference between what you're paying on a, like a two or three year fixed rate versus what you'd be paying on a variable, not knowing how quickly variable would come down, you may outperform on the fixed versus the variable, at least for two to three years. Mm. So there are advantages and disadvantages of both. And I think that's a, you know, it's per client situation. And we have these discussions with the client. So we determine which product would make more, the most sense for them. But personally, what I'm recommending at the moment is taking a two or a three year waiting for those, that prime to come down and then we can reevaluate and then renew. Yeah. Yeah. I think it all comes down to, I think that's the important part, right? Like it, like it really comes down to your, your comfort level. Right. And that's why I think, we work so well together. Cause that's our, like, we, we, you know, you would never tell somebody like, we would never tell somebody like, this is the house you have to buy, or this is the type of product you need to take because it all depends on their comfort level. Right. And I, I always say to people like, don't take a variable, even like traditionally variables have outperformed, but don't take a variable. If you can't sleep at night, if it's going to keep you up at night and you can't sleep, don't, don't do it. Like, it's not worth that, that little bit of extra, you know, the, the difference in, in what you're going to save. I mean, you know, so I think that's important. It's it based yeah. on, you have to know what your comfort level is. Yeah. There's no one size fits all product. Yeah. I think like the more educated you get on the risks or the benefits of either product would make your decision easier. So it's not about just Googling what makes the most sense right now. It's really diving into what your comfort level is, what your risk is, what are we at capped budget? Because that can make a big change too. And whether I would recommend a variable or a fixed. So it's yeah. really individualized right now. And how long you're going to stay in the house. Like if you're, if, cause if you're not planning to stay there all that long, like there's no sense, there's no sense taking a five-year mortgage in any case. Like if you're planning to, if you know, you're going to be selling in a couple of years, it doesn't make sense to do a five-year, right? No, exactly. And yeah. you know what? Situations change all the time too. You just don't know what's going to happen in your life and what you're going to need to, you know, what could potentially, you know, go on, whether you're going to have to sell your house tomorrow or whether you're going to be there for a very long time. We just don't know. So, yeah. um, you know, again, benefits and risks to all different products, but I think it's like, we really just have to dive into what are you comfortable doing right now? What is your plan right now? Right. Yeah. So, okay. and then we can determine which option makes the most sense. Yeah. It's exactly the same when you buy, right? Like when's the best time to buy? Well, the best times to buy and the best time to buy is when it's time for you to buy. Yeah. When you, you need to buy. buy, that's when you should buy. <laughs> yeah. So true. So true. Yeah. So I want to talk a little bit about a story that I just read um, uh, uh, that was published, I think a few days ago where they're talking about um, the, the defaults on mortgages and stuff like that. And I found it interesting and I'll let you um, talk in a bit about it, but the, they were saying that like how much they've skyrocketed. I can't remember what the exact number was, but it made it seem like, you know, they like it's gone crazy. And when you take the two comparisons that they gave, they have gone up a lot, but when you factored into actual numbers, it's not a lot, right? Mm -hmm. Like it was something like, you know, a, a very low percentage and then a, another percentage, but whatever, I'm not explaining this properly. But I think my, my point is you got to be really careful about what you read because, mm -hmm. you know, the headline is what gets people to buy the newspaper or read the story or click on it or whatever. Right. So I think the headline was like something about, um, mortgage you know, defaults. defaults. Yeah. And mortgage defaults have skyrocketed and people can't pay their mortgages. But when I read into it a little bit more, I was like, it's not really not that high. If you look no. at it in terms of, you know, the, the actual numbers, but, um, but I think it is happening. I think it is rising and maybe you can talk about that a little bit. Yeah. I mean, to your point, you know, media is always going to make things a little bit more scary than they may need to be. I think, you know, mortgage holders have been prepared since inflation started that if you're going to be renewing in the next couple of years to anticipate a higher interest rate. Now, of course, that can negatively negatively impact a lot of people because they potentially have, you know, really based their, um, you know, budget on a specific interest rate. So if they had a 2%, now they're at a 5%, that could really impact them. And I think that is what is impacting these defaults, right? Is because we are now coming into renewals, people have to renew at a higher interest rate and are in a little bit of trouble. So, I mean, it is 
the reality that we are living in. I think what I can say is, um, you know, there are always options. I think the biggest thing is talk to your mortgage agents or your banks. Talk to someone because the possibility of maybe you extending to a 30 year can help you avoid having mortgage default because your monthly payments would then decrease. Now, it may not be, um, you know, available for a lot of people, but I think just having conversations to see if there are options out there for you to help you avoid default is, um, you know, it's important, especially today. But yeah, it's art media is funny that way. <laughs> they yeah. don't highlight anything else. <laughs> yeah. And I've heard you say it before. And it's so true. Like, have those conversations, but have them early. Like, don't wait until you're in dire straits to have the conversation. Like when you see that this is going to be a problem, that's when you have maybe have the conversation, right? Like, yeah, I think that would make a lot of sense too. Absolutely. And you know what, like I said, I think, you know, some, some people may benefit and some may not, but I think being educated and like really knowing your options and what is available to you, if anything, I think that's important right? Knowing that you've explored your options, maybe have given, maybe now you're, you know, you have some insight, maybe, you know, whatever the case may be, just having a conversation can really make some changes. Yeah, for sure. Because there's always options. I think there's always, always options out there. There's always something that we could potentially do yeah. whether or not, but the thing is for me, if it doesn't make sense for you to do it, I'm not going to tell you to do it. Right. Yeah. Like we really run the, we run the numbers. We, you know, we make sure that making any sort of changes is really going to benefit you before we say, okay, you know, pull the trigger. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What do you, what are you seeing the most? Like, what, what do you see most people taking right now? Like in terms of mortgages, are most people taking like a two or three or, or are they still taking like, what's the biggest one right now? Would three years. Three years, kind of, yeah. That's the that's the hot spot. We're noticing that four year rates lenders are coming down on. The thing is, lenders are smart, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they're not going to make a two or a three year fixed rate the best interest rate. They're not going to do that because then they're going to be losing a lot of business, right? They're also very smart in not increasing discounts against the variable rates because variable and prime is coming down, so they don't want to oversell a product if it's not in their best interest. Yeah. My opinion, taking a three or two year makes the most sense, even if it is at a little bit of a higher interest rate, because rates are going to be coming down. You should not be locking into a high interest rate product um, for the long term at the moment because we're at the peak. Right. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. make sense. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And I think it's I, I think it's going to be I think this year will be interesting. I think mm -hmm. it'll be another interesting. It already article. is. Yeah. It's keeping me on my toes already. I'm like, what is going on? <laughs> but I'm also ready for it. <laughs> I, know, I know. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's very interesting. So what, um, what, what we're going to do in the, in the video, I'll put your contact details in the chat and stuff. So people can contact you if they want to reach out, even if, you know, Monica's always open for people to call her, even if, you just have questions about your oh gosh, mortgage yeah. or, you know, what you should do, different things like that, especially if you have a, if you, if your mortgage is coming up for renewal and you know, it's going to come a lot higher and you don't, you're not sure what your options are, then reach out. I mean, Monica's always happy to, to go over those details with you and let you know, these are your options. What's the best thing for you to do. And, and then you make a decision from there. I think as long as you have options, that's the biggest thing I think, right? Like a hundred percent. I'm better. I'm huge on that. I love giving my clients options because for me, it's about educating my clients, right? Like yeah. I want to show you what's available to you and then you decide what makes the most sense, right? Yeah. We don't want to like hold you to just a couple of different things if we have so many other products available. So I'm always happy to a phone call. The biggest thing for me and Sandy, you know this about me, is if it's not going to turn into a transaction for me, it's about the customer service. My, I'm very relationship-based. Yeah. So I'm always happy to have a phone call. I think it's important to have somebody on your side. Yeah. And, and if it doesn't turn into business, then it will at some point. And that's, and if it doesn't, that's okay. And that's okay too. Like I said, for me, I'm all about the relationship. So please, anytime, call me. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe say your phone number and then it'll be in the video too. And then we'll, we'll. Sure. Uh, How should we do like an infomercial? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> call Monica Falco at M2 Mortgage Team with Capital Home Lending. <laughs> She I know, right? Should I just like shoot up my phone number in the side over here? Do you actually want me to save my number? 
Absolutely. Say your number. Okay. At 647-204-8621. Call me anytime. Awesome. <laughs> Just not after midnight, please. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Monica. Always a pleasure talking to you. And I'm sure we'll do this again in a few weeks and we'll keep everybody updated. Thank you very much, Sandy. Awesome. I appreciate it. Thanks.